Okay, so today we're going to connect the graphs. So we're going to connect our position time graphs with our velocity time graphs. And we're going to compare the two to each other. So it says to draw the position time and velocity time graphs for each scenario, then describe their connections. So that's what we're going to do. If you look, we have our position time graphs across the top. We have a position time graph for stop, constant velocity, speeding up, and slowing down. We have our velocity time graphs across the bottom, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to draw one for stopped, we're going to draw one for constant velocity, one for speeding up, and one for slowing down. So let's start with our position time graphs. So if I want to draw a position time graph for an object that's stopped, it's going to always be a horizontal line. So I'm going to say this is north and this is south. So this object is stopped. north of my reference point. If I wanted to draw an object that was stopped south of my reference point, it would simply be a horizontal line below the x-axis. So this is stopped south of my reference point. And if I wanted to draw an object that was just chilling at the reference point, not doing anything, I would draw it on the x-axis. So this is stopped at the reference point. Because this over here on a distance time graph is telling us how far it's gone from zero or how far it's gone from the reference point. So the slope for all of these is what? The slope is zero. All right, so let's look at being stopped on a velocity time graph. If we're stopped on a velocity time graph, that means our velocity or our speed has to be at zero meters per second. So we're not changing positions and we're not changing speeds. We're stopped. We're not doing anything. So no matter where I am to the reference point, if I'm going to draw something that's stopped, it's going to be on top of that x-axis in a velocity time graph. So we can say again, this is north and this is south. So it's a horizontal line on the x-axis. And the starting position here doesn't matter. Regardless, the graph looks the same. So regardless of the starting position, The graph looks the same. Okay, so now we want to talk about a constant velocity. So in a distance time graph, this is north and this is south. If we're traveling at a constant velocity, we're traveling at a rate that doesn't change away from the starting point. So this object is going to start north of the reference point, And it's going to travel at a constant velocity. So it starts north of my reference point. It moves at a constant velocity because it's a straight line. It's supposed to be a straight line. 
the slope isn't changing. And the slope is positive. Because the slope is positive, that means it's moving north. All right, if I wanted to draw something with a constant velocity that was heading south, I would draw it from the other direction. So let's draw this one starting at our reference point just for fun. That's, I'm sorry, Miss Neal's not the best artist. This is why you always use a straight edge when you make real graphs. So this guy starts at the reference point here. But the slope is negative. So a negative slope means that it's moving south. You could change this to east and west, whatever you set it to be. So what do we know in whole or all in all about a constant velocity on a position time graph? Constant velocity on a position time graph is graphed by a constant non-zero slope. The slope could be 0.1, that's a velocity, it's moving, and it's constant. Okay, so let's go down here to the bottom. We're gonna set positive is north and negative is south, and we have a velocity time graph. All right, so if we're traveling at a constant velocity on a velocity time graph, that means our velocity is never changing. So if our velocity was three meters per second, it would be three meters per second the whole way across. So that gives us a straight line. So constant velocity on a velocity time graph is a straight line above velocity equals zero. All right, but what if I was traveling south? I'm not traveling north. I'm traveling south at three meters per second, and it's constant. It's not changing. I'm going to go south or negative one, two, three. So I, again, I have a horizontal line. It's below velocity equals zero. So that means I'm at a place south, or I'm heading south, and I'm not changing speeds. I'm going a constant speed. So in regards to this graph, both of my lines have a zero slope, but their location determines speed and direction. My speed right here is three meters per second and my direction is south. Here my speed is three meters per second and my direction is north. All right, let's compare both on. That's not what I wanted it to do, okay. Let's compare both of these when they're speeding up. All right, so if I am speeding up on a position time graph, I'm going to make a curve, bloop, bloop, just like that. So my object here starts north of the reference point, point. 
and I'm accelerating north. We can tell I'm accelerating because when I drop those tangent lines, they get steeper and steeper. The slope of them gets steeper and steeper and steeper. All right. But what if I want to accelerate south? If I want to accelerate south, I'm going to start at the reference point again just for point of reference. And it's going to look like this because when I drop those tangent lines, the slope gets steeper and steeper and steeper. So we're going to start at the, this one starts at the reference point. And it's accelerating south. So on a position time graph, we know the magnitude of the slope increases. All right, so let's look at it on a velocity time graph. On a velocity time graph, if we're speeding up, our velocity is getting greater and greater and greater and greater and greater. So we are going to have a straight line. Our slope here is positive. So we're accelerating north. And I forgot to label these. All right, but what if we don't want to accelerate north? What if we want to accelerate south? We want to accelerate south. We're going to extend down into that negative area. So we have a negative slope. So we're accelerating south. So in a velocity time graph, as the velocity gets further from the x-axis, the velocity increases. So this is acceleration. All right, last but not least, let's look at slowing down. So slowing down on a position time graph. We've got north, we've got south. We want to slow down. Uh, we've been starting, I uh, started that one at 2, so let's start here at 2. All right, so we're going to start north of the reference point. So we're north of the reference point when we started. And we decelerate to a stop. All right, and if I was south of the reference point, it would look like this. So I'm south of the reference point and I decelerate to a stop. We know this because when we drop our tangent lines, the magnitude of the slope decreases. So as I go around the corner, my slope decreases. Same with here. All right, so let's look at a velocity time graph. So we've got north, we've got south. All right, so we are decelerating north to a stop. So if we're decelerating, that means we have to start at a speed greater than zero. And we want to travel from that speed greater than zero to zero. So we're decelerating. north. We're stopped right here. This is where we stop. And our slope is negative. All 
All right, if we want to decelerate south, that means if we're decelerating, we have to start at a velocity greater than zero and approach zero. So we're decelerating south. We have a positive slope. So what can we say for this graph? For this graph, I can say as the velocity gets closer to zero meters per second, the speed decreases. And that's deceleration. All right, guys, so there you have it. Here's all of the graphs. So we can compare the two. We've got all of our position time graphs across the top. And we've got all of our velocity time graphs on the bottom.